So if I open up my index HTML and my CSS, let's see what the project looks like so far. So we've got the main design inside of a div, which has that class of wrapper. Top header area, which we have a nice looking nav bar. Footer at the bottom as well. And the last thing we did, we started to divide the design into columns, left and right. So very quickly, the way that was done in CSS, we've got at about line 98, section dot blog the class of blog attached to section. And then that is evident here in the HTML section class blog. So there's a whole section of main content. Float left. We will see that we have the ability to float elements left and right, but they don't exactly work how you think. You might think, well, the left column will have a float left, and the right column will have a float right. That would make too much sense. It actually doesn't quite work that way. It has to do with, remember we've talked about block level elements and inline level elements. A block level element takes up all of its space and pushes the rest of the stuff to its own spot. It takes up the whole block. An inline level element uh, plays nice and keeps different things on the same line. Float is related to that to create inline level elements. And we have to often do this, have to float elements to the left, to sort of like force the element to the left of the window so that you can put more elements next to it. It'll make sense once we do the right column, when we focus on the right column, it'll also basically have a float left. Uh, again, even though it sounds like you would do left or right. If you wanted to increase or decrease how much of that left column you have, it's pretty obvious. You change your width. Like this whole section has a width, have it at 70%. If I wanted to take up more space, increase that. If I want to take up less space, decrease it. Then we defined an H2 top. Notice there is a space there between the section and the class. Because this one back here said this class is directly attached to that tag. And here I'm saying anywhere where this t class exists inside of this tag, apply the following. All right, next line, um, we're going to deal with editing or working with the individual articles here. We've got a picture and then the text that goes along with it. I want that to be aligned properly. So that means we're going to target the article. So next line here, we'll write article. Anywhere where there is an article, let's do the following. We're not specifying actually, you know, section, blog, article. We could, but anywhere where there's an article will affect it the following way. Clear both. The note for that is common tactic to separate. Separate 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 to separate elements. Because we've had a float left that is basically keeping the elements on the same line, kind of like an inline 
level design. When we want to break it apart, that no longer keep it floating left, clear both is often used for that. So sort of uh, nullify line 99, float left. The thing about CSS, again, that it's, it's tricky. And the tricky thing about it is that sometimes different browsers interpret the code different way, different ways. So Firefox might show things the right way, and then Chrome might show it slightly different way, and they're all the right way, so to speak, just like there's different dialects of English. You know, I can speak with a California accent, a Georgia accent, a British accent, it's all English, but different dialects. So here, this is sort of just like, trust me, this works. Clear both will separate this article from it previously floating up here. So we would use that if we use float? Yes, very common to use both. First float, and then clear once we need to separate. With 100%. So more of the complexity is that unless we specify things, <coughs> these elements will behave on their own with their own basic definition. Here I'm saying the article, which is all of this text as well as the picture, I want to take 100% of the container that it's in. Articles in this case are in the container of section. So if you look here in the HTML article is in section. So we're saying article should stretch out to be 100% wide as much as section is wide. Up here on section, we have previously said that it will be 70% to leave space for a sidebar. So the articles will stretch out as much as the section. And we do that to make sure the things behave like we want, because again, the different browsers interpret the code a little bit differently. And that's why there's some space on the margins? Um, most. It's like the 30% of the Yes. Um, do you mean 30% like of this that's left yeah. over? It'll have to do something with that. Um, when we put the right side column, yeah, it'll only take up 30% because we're taking up 70% on the left. All right, then we'll do. How does it know? Um, is it just part of because it's reading that um, the section is going to follow before the block? The section is going to follow before the article? Yes, it, it follows it in that order because that's how we wrote it in the HTML. It is, uh, we created it this way. We have to create the section container, the parent element, and then there's children element inside of it. One article, two article. So in the HTML, we wrote with one thing inside of another. And then we basically continue it also like that in CSS, trying to write the code for the parent first and then the child, because it does matter the order in which we write this, these things. <clears throat> if we had article defined first, it may look differently then article defined secondly because of the way the browsers interpret the code. So I guess we'll talk later about how to structure it or figure it out, like what would be the best way to kind of write it, right? Well, we're learning that <coughs> as we as we write the code because uh, logically from how much HTML we've written, it should start to make sense about well what's inside of what. You know, an article goes inside of a section have footer at the very end, I wouldn't really write footer as the second line because I want footer at the end. And then so with the CSS, we want to kind of do the same thing. I started with section, and now I'm going with article, then I'm going to go deeper. I just wrote H group. H group follows here. So basically, how we wrote it in the HTML, we're going to write it from the CSS. So this new item here, article, space, H group. So here I'm saying an H group 
inside of an article. And that's what I also have in the HTML. H group, which is the collection of um, text that will be we're going to set that uh, margin top 1.5 M so a little bit of space we're, con we're controlling the space here this text gets moved out just a little bit one and a half Okay, so this that last code was editing the H group, uh, and uh, in in my notes I, I forgot to check this, but following along with what I was just saying, well, we've got a figure first. Whoops, let's just back up a little bit. We've got a figure first that we should define some CSS. So we'll back up just to keep it in order. We've got figure, then H group, then paragraph. I was about to get, forget about that. So let's back up and write. The definition for what figure should should do. It probably will be okay if we put the figure code after the H group code, but again, trying to keep it in the same order as what we've got the HTML is often best. So here we're going to say article space figure space image. here. We've got an image which is a child of figure which itself is a child of article. So article space figure space image. So logically if I had only said image every image would be affected. Even the images on the sidebar or the footer or the header. That's too generic. If I had figure image that might be too generic as well. I may use figure and image combination also in the sidebar. We've got article figure. That's a little more specific, and we're hopefully targeting the right thing. And if we want to be to be even more specific, we could have done section dot blog space article space figure space image. But sometimes you don't need to be that specific if you can figure out the logic of what your code is. It doesn't hurt if you write it the longer way. It says more to write. But the way I wrote it a moment ago is specific enough. Article, figure, image. Uh, the width of this image will be 100%. Next line, article. figure fig caption so now I'm writing CSS to target the figure caption font dash size 90% I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than what it currently is, 90%. If I was writing this as M's, 0.9 M. So two ways to write the same thing. Slightly different units. So whichever one you want, 90%. Text dash align left. the image is huge. Both of the images are huge, too big. But they're taking up 100% of that space. 
Well, I'm doing that so that then I can put this text on the right side of it. So the image will be, will take up some space and then the text will take up some space over here. First, I'm stretching out the image to make sure that it looks nice and takes up the right space. Okay, so now we'll go back to this article H group. Next line. Actually, one more thing. Let's back up. Um, article figure image, article figure caption. Actually, one more thing before that. Article figure. We should have written this one first uh, because that's what we've got here. Uh, let's target the whole figure container first, then the specifics of the image, then the caption. So that's what I was missing here. So article figure, then the uh, image, then the caption. Float left with uh, 290 pixels, margin 1M, margin top 0. Adding five pixels, border border one pixel solid light slate gray and border radius. So I'm just writing all of these and then to see the result. To explain what they're doing is kind of obvious when you then see it. Um, putting a little border around the image, one pixel light slate gray. Rounding it five pixels, so you have this nice round edge. Padding five pixels, so uh, that's that little bit of space between the border and the picture margin and then margin top. Since it's written in that order, margin 1M, it's saying on all four sides, 1M of space to separate the text from the picture, all four sides. But then I have to cancel out the top. I could write margin as 1, no, as 0, 1, 1, 1. Or do it this way, where I first say all four sides at once and then cancel out one of the sides. The width of that whole figure is 290. So now it's not so big that it takes away the space from the text. And float left so that we have the picture on the same line as the text. Because it would have been a block level element and continue to push this text down. That should apply to both of the articles, the Spider-Man article and the Black Cat article, because they're both constructed the same way with image tags, the figure tag, etc. They both change the same way. You can uh, change things up, more space, put a bigger margin here so that you have more space between the words, uh, put more padding here so you've got a thicker border on the picture, um, different colors and so forth. For fun, we've, I just uh, showed you the code to round the border. Well, we can use that same code to round the picture itself. Can you figure that out? How do we round the corners of the picture based on how we rounded the corners of that box? Mm, image, image, giving it a border radius. We, we have border radius. 
that's the one we use. But the then we figure image. Exactly, we apply it to the image. Mm -hmm. So to the image, we'll add border radius. Right now it's set to 100%. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Let me, let's check that one moment. So, like this for fun. Uh, border radius 2 pixels round. Now if it's out of the border, I've seen that before. What, what is it? Um, put it out of the border. Uh, check over here, article, space, figure, space, image. It might be that your widths of your picture is, and actually that the class is not working. Because when I put the um, border radius, radius it's, it's not applying. So it's probably going to be that article image figure. Well, I should go back to the browser. It's, uh, it's a way to click. Uh, let's go back to So if, if your picture popped out, just let me recreate that. So let's say like this, you know, if it's, if it's not doing what you want. So the logic of it of how I would try to troubleshoot that, well, you know, my text seems to be right, my border seems to be right, the image isn't right. So then I would look at my code. I've got code that I'm targeting the image. I've got code where it's the figure, where it's the image, where it's the H group. So I try to focus on that part of the code where that doesn't seem to be behaving. One thing that I like to do also when I'm trying to figure out this code, I often like to add a border or a background color of red because all of these are invisible boxes. Uh, they're invisible boxes and you don't see what is what. So it doesn't really work on the image here. But let's say on the figure caption, I add a border background red just so that I can see, I can see the box. Right there. Since it's an invisible box, it's hard for me to figure out what's happening. So I personally like to add a background color red. It's bright, big and bright. I know where it appeared, so then I can try to figure out what happened. Did you put that in the figure? I put that one in the figure caption just to choose a random bit of text. We're not keeping that. I don't like how that looks. But I'm just saying that uh, I like to put a background color on an element to figure out what's broken about it. So here, then, it looks like it's correct. It's all blue. And unfortunately, here, uh, Notepad isn't helping me because oftentimes we go, to, we go by the color of the code to help us figure out what's wrong. And here, image is blue in my color scheme, which I think it's right. But technically, it thinks you're making up a tag, such as kitty cat. There is no HTML tag called kitty cat. And then here it is colored blue, just like it thinks, like it's a real tag. So that's kind of a tricky one to figure out. But it's IMG, not image. OK, so we've got the left, we've got sort of like a left column and a right column for the image and for the text. And that's happening because we've got similar concept with the section blog. We have a float left and we have a width. So that then there is space left over for the right column. The way we've got that with the image is we've got a float left and a width. So that there's some amount left over. For the, for the text. That's a very common way to do those columns. Float one side.
to the left, give it a defined width so that the right column can have its own space. Okay, so now we can contr we can return back to this article H group. So the article space P colon first dash letter. So we saw the colon before when we when we did rollovers. It's a special state. There are a few other special colon elements of CSS. This one is first letter. This is saying, let's target, let's select the first letter of a paragraph in an article. This is going to create the effect of a drop cap, which you've probably seen in books, but you never knew what it was called. Uh, have you read a book where the very first letter of the chapter is like a nice big letter to catch your attention? That's how we do this in CSS. Let's target the first letter of a paragraph in the article. We also have to float left this so that that big letter is to the left of the regular paragraph. Adding five pixels at the top, five at the right, zero at the bottom, zero at the left. So I'm targeting the first letter. I'm starting to separate it. Float left, we're separating it from the rest of the paragraph. Padding so that there's a little bit of space at the top, the right, but not at the bottom and the left. To make that more impressive, color, midnight blue. Font size, 3M. Font weight, bold. So now we get that. That's a drop cap probably seen that in books, right? You read a novel or you read some fiction or something, it's often often like that. We can that's uh, totally just for aesthetics, but uh, via the comment here we can say to create a drop cap. The first letter is capital. say might be the code for us to target that link. Article figure A. Article figure A. It seems to make sense because we've got an A tag inside of the figure inside of the article. Let's see if that works. So we're going to change the color of that text. Red. <laughs> so 
So it would make sense, uh, article space figure space A, and it didn't change. Article A, H group, and article figure H group A. Let's see, article figure H group, um, H group. No, that's not exactly in the H group. Yeah, so we could do the long way or the short way. Here's the long way. Uh, article. There is no P figure. Oh, yes. So there's that way. Because we've got we've got the whole article. Then we've got the P. P is not in H group, and it's not in figure. They're on the same level. That's why I've got them tabbed this way. Figure, H group, and P are sibling elements. This is a child element of that parent element. This is a child element of that element. But this is a sibling of this element and this element. One easy way to see it is just the tabbing, which is optional but I do these tabs to make it make sense like that. Now these, this, is a child of this parent, which is a child of this parent. So see how we have to write, okay, article P, A, to target the right one. This also works, though, as simply article A. We didn't have to be that specific to say P. This would have worked. Now, the problem with that is if we have a, a link inside of the figure caption, an A in fig caption, an A would be the same as article A. If we wanted the, the link in fig caption to be different color than the link in the paragraph, we'd have to then be specific. So on that one, I want orange-red. Any color you want, but I've got orange-red. It's a slightly orange-red. And I want a hover effect. We've hovered over the nav bar to change color. Once we hover over, it's going to be very similar here. Article A colon hover. It's targeting the hover state. We, we could e name each one with a different class, yes, and it will be more work because since we didn't put classes for each of these articles, we can target them both at once. If we name each one with a class, you know, we'd have to do something like this, article dot spider comma article dot cat. Because then now they, they're going to have, I'm assuming you're saying that one's going to say article class black cat. Yeah article class Spider-Man. So we have to say article dot Spider-Man comma article dot black cat. Okay. So just more typing. Yeah. I think it's because for me it's just easier to see them as separate elements. Mm -hmm. Trying to group them all together. Yeah, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. If that makes sense for you to do it that way, go ahead and I think it'll it'll work well. Just it's a little bit more typing and you just have to remember to be more specific. So what we're going to do with the hover is we're going to say uh, background color and teak white and color of the text midnight blue. So when you hover over the text of read more get antique white 
background, which kind of looks like a really weak beige. Blue. I'm using the same colors many times as you see. Midnight blue over here, over here. That's for consistency. That midnight blue is the same midnight blue as this, which was used somewhere else also in the project. We have steel blue as the top nav bar color. Steel blue as this line that goes here to the bottom. So consistency with these colors. I think we've also got steel blue for the border of the pictures, all of this consistency and color design. Orange red, we had not used that one at all throughout the project yet, and that's on purpose because it's going to stand out. It's a link. It's something different. Nothing else is orange red in, except my links. So eventually, once we get to the colors of the sidebar, we're going to use those also. I want my sidebar to have those same colors and maybe the same effect of the rollover. Okay, so uh, we're going to start targeting the aside, the sidebar. So we're going to write a bunch of side code. 